It's Jason from the Erie Toolworks company again. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble an SE163. So the SE163 is a farm barrel. If you just want to come over here, I'll take you through what it looks like. It's this wheelbarrow here, so it's got an extra large 10 cubic foot, very, poly, uh, very durable poly tray. The tray itself measures 43 inches long, 35 inches wide, and is 19 inches deep. This is the deepest tray in the Canadian market right now at retail, and it's a great farm barrel. So the first question is gonna be, what would anybody use this wheelbarrow for? Well, generally it's for large bulky loads, but items that aren't overly heavy. So for example, a short bale of hay, if you're on a farm, is ideal for something like this. If you're doing uh, hauling mulch or anything that's bulky and light, a lot of people use these for manure. It is called a farm barrel for a reason. Ideally, it works very well in the agricultural regions of Canada. So if you have this, it's a big blue tray. It's gonna say Erie on the side, and it is gonna come with a pair of handles. The handles are 60 inches, made of a heavy gauge steel. They will say Erie on the side that's gonna match the logo here, and it does have the part number on it, SE163. This is something we started putting on the handles in 2020. It's been in for a couple of years now, so if you don't see that number, it doesn't mean it's wrong. But if you do have that, you do know it does match with this tray. Because this wheelbarrow is a dual wheeled model, it comes in this parts carton over here, which is a little bit larger than normal. You'll see that it's an SE163. In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to take you through how to assemble this wheelbarrow and uh, give you a few tips from along the way. Okay, so now we've opened up the parts carton. I just want to make sure that you've got everything you need before you get started. So it should come with two legs. That's going to go on the base. This is gonna be the cross bracket between the legs to hold them together. You're also gonna get a bag that's gonna come with the hardware to attach the axle to the actual handles, as well as there's some spacers in there. Those spacers are gonna be used on this long axle, a little bit over 21 inches, about 21 and a quarter inches. You're gonna have three pieces of flat bar. This is gonna create an I-beam brace underneath the tray to give it some additional rigidity and support. You're gonna have two front tray braces that you see right here. You're going to have a parts bag that's going to have all your nut and bolt hardware, your nose iron. You're going to have two four-ply pneumatic tires. Make sure when you put these on, I'll remind you later, but make sure you put the valve stems out. Nothing's worse than getting your wheelbarrow together to find out your valve stems are on the inside, so that's a little bit of a hint. Comes with instructions, and I do recommend that you get a half-inch deep socket as well as a slot screwdriver. Okay, so step one, we're going to assemble the undercarriage. So you're going to use your two legs and your cross brace. So what I'm going to do is you recommend you pick up the legs. You're going to hold it like this. So this front brace here, this is going to be the front of the wheelbarrow. The hole is going to be in the back. You're going to take the cross brace that you see right here, like this, point it up to the sky like this, arrow pointing up. And you're just going to lay that over the hole, and you're going to apply a nut and bolt. Back. Just gonna fold these together, and again, at this phase, only hand tight. You don't need to tighten anything down. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now that we've finished the undercarriage assembly. You can see here as we look at it, we've got the legs put together, this going towards the front of the wheelbarrow, this rear support here going towards the back of the user. You can see that the nut and bolts are just hand tight. That's all you need for right now. Okay, so the next step, if you wanna come around here, you're going to take your three inch bolt, it's the longest bolt in your package, and you've got your big blue tray here. What you're going to do is take it with the washer that's provided, so there's this nice large washer. That's going to bite on the plastic. You're going to put that down through there, and I recommend a clear packaging tape, high quality packaging tape, maybe like this Duck Brand HD clear tape to put on the bolts. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. And you're going to do this to all four positions of the tray. I've moved this half off the table, so it's pretty easy for me to get at. I'm going to switch it around now, do it the other side. Okay, so now is time to make the eye brace. It's going to support the bottom of the tray, as I mentioned earlier. With this large, expansive area, anything that's sharp, anything that hits the bottom, could fracture it in the winter. So we've done I've gone a step further and made something called an eye beam. So the way it goes together, and I'll show you the quick assembly here. Is, you're going to take your longest piece with the least amount of space on the side here. It's just got a very little space. And it's going to go over that like that. You're then going to take your shortest piece, so it's significantly shorter. It goes up here, and it goes over here like that. And then the long piece here, 
is going to go right in the middle and it should go underneath these two right here. So it should go here and here. So, so now you've seen you've got your cross brace. So at this stage, what you need to do is take this off and bolt it together uh, with the small bolts that have been supplied. You only need two of them, one here and one here. The key is to make sure that the bolt head is down like this and like this. And then what you're going to do is put on your nuts and washers and then you're going to get done your cross brace. So at this stage I've taken off the eye brace and now it's obviously loose so it's time for me to tighten this up before I put it back on the wheel barrel like that. I'm just going to make some adjustments there. Tighten up this one down here. Nice and snug. And now again, I'm going to take the bolt head, this version here, narrow towards the front, wide at the back. And I'm going to put it on over top of the bolts, just like that. And as you can see, if there's any deflection in the poly, it's going to be stopped by this metal bracket that you're going to see right here. The next piece here, I'm going to take the handle, the SC163, the earring name should go down or towards the user. And the black handle should not be going towards the nose, but toward the back of the tray. So here, flip that around. That goes in like that. And that goes through like that. Now, we do recommend taping the bolts on the other side. It makes things a lot easier. That being said, this is a step because it's a very deep tray that it may be good to call a friend give you a, a helping hand in getting up from the bottom because this is a very wide tub and very difficult to reach through. So a helping hand might be needed at this stage. Okay, at this, at this stage you want to come over, you'll see we got the I-beam, we've got the longest piece at the back, we've got the bolt head down, we've got the I-beam coming up to the middle, and then we've got an I-beam going left to right here and we're tagged on both ends. These are now tight and there's very little play there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the legs that we assembled in, in the early steps and we're going to attach these legs to the wheelbarrow. It's, it's key to understand that this back cross brace towards, goes towards the back and it is facing up like we put together in step one. And we're basically just going to come over here, set on like that. Okay, at this stage we've got the legs mounted to the handles and the frame and the tray. We've hand tightened them down. We don't recommend tightening down the legs at this point in time. The only thing that should be snug is the cross brace. And we're gonna come around to the front and we're going to put the nose iron, which is this piece right here. We're just gonna put it on like this. You're gonna find yourself the two inch bolt from the bolt pack. And you're just gonna put it through straight like that. And like that. And you're going to do the same on the other side and use your nuts and washers to snug it up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how it goes together. Then I'm going to assemble it and then we'll come back just to make sure. But you've got this black bracket right here. It's going to go on the bottom right like that. And then this piece is going to, this piece here, the axle goes through, is going to be put on like that. Again, put it very loosely. And then you're also going to take this front tray brace. And what you're going to do is put the flat edge through this first bolt, pardon me, and then it's gonna line up with the tray like that. So if you can envision that, I'll be back in just a minute and I'll show you what this looks like assembled. So this phase, what we've done is we put the flat bracket on the bottom. We've got this bracket here that's gonna hold the axle. We'll see that in just a minute. And we've got the front tray brace that's gonna go up against the tray a little later. Don't connect that at this point in time. We're gonna do that in just a minute once we start getting everything tightened up. The next step, what we're going to do is you've got this long axle here. This is the dual wheel axle. It's a three quarter inch axle, and it's got to have these drilled cotter pin holes on each end. So what you're going to do is just basically open this up just a little bit and slide it through. Slide it through over here. Push it off a little bit more. 
and then try and get it somewhat centered. Uh, you'll figure that out in a second because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these spacers. It comes with these two spacers. I'm going to put a spacer on each side. Then you're getting ready for the wheel assemblies, which I'll put on right now. The tires. This stage, when putting on the tires, make sure that the air valve is sticking out. So, don't want to make that mistake. Put that on like that. Looks like I did a pretty good job lining that up. And then the last step is... You're going to take one of these large washers, put it on the outside, and then you're going to put your cotter pin through there, and you're going to bend it back and lock it in place. Okay, in this phase, what we've done, in this stage, we've put both pneumatic tires on. Please note that the stems are to the outside, so if you have to inflate your tire, you do that. You've got the large washer on here, and I've also taken some needle nose pliers, and I've taken the, the cotter pin, and I've bent that back, so that's not going to come off the axle. I've done the same thing on the other side. It seems to be spaced in the center because they're both pushed out to the edge, and this step's complete. Uh, now you're going to go around and tighten up your nuts and bolts. As I said before, you need to start snugging everything up. The one thing I should have said is this, this bolt here, this front bolt, um, should remain somewhat flexible. You need a little bit of play here in order to get this on. So what you're going to do, you're going to go with one of your short bolts. It's a one inch. You're going to take your big washer, put it through, and then you're just going to reach around here. It's a pretty deep tray. And then just kind of work it back on like that. You're going to put your washer, a lock washer on it. And then you're going to fasten a nut. Okay, so now we're done the assembly of the Erie SE 163 Farm Barrel. Again, this product is not designed for carrying concrete 600 pounds. This is designed for lighter stuff that's bulky. Hay, manure, mulch, great for landscapers. The tray is, is wonderful, nice and big. It's supported in the bottom. You got two pneumatic tires, which are good for, for flotation. So if you get into muddy instances, that's going to be superior to a flat free tire. Just an all around, around great product. A lot of people may overlook this as too big, but depending on the application, it could save you a lot of loads going back and forth. If your landscaper, it might be ideal. Again, this is available at a variety of retailers throughout Canada. Go on the web to find out. If you have any problems with the product, we ask that you follow up with the company. You can contact us Monday to Friday, 9 to 4, 866-316-3743. Uh, or you can send us an email to service at etwcompany.com. And we'll be more than happy to help you out. Enjoy the rest of your summer.